guys, welcome back to my channel. On this episode, I'm taking you on a city walk in Chengdu. I arrived at the JW Marriott in Chengdu. This is just a regular king bedroom. They are out of suite and studio. I literally booked today as I extended my trip on a very last minute. Literally, I was changing my ticket at 1 a.m. So thank you. Oh, they remember I love this wine, this white wine. It's always a good touch to come back to hotels that remembers what you like. This is one of the most crowded area in Chengdu. I'm gonna show you bits and pieces of the city. It's huge, so I'll just try my best. This is one of the coolest Gucci store I have ever seen in all the Gucci in the world. This is really, really cool. Across the street is IFS. This is a outdoor shopping center in traditional Chinese uh, buildings. There is the coolest Louis Vuitton here. And of course, there is Apple Store, Hermes, Zara, Tiffany, which is being renovated right now. This is the Louis Vuitton women. This uh, heritage building here were all renovated in 2014 to become this commercial base. Wow, it's so pretty, guys. Oh, this is the coolest Louis Vuitton bookstore I've ever seen. And trust me, I think I have been to a lot of Louis Vuitton. Wow, this is so cool. Let me see the inside. This is the Louis Vuitton restaurant here at Taiguli in Chengdu. You can do afternoon tea here and also there's an actual restaurant. Wow, the setting is really, really cool architectures or the old ancient touch and with like a modern twist cool 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 uh, all these architectures were here but they were not renovated yet so where the Louis Vuitton was it was called the Guangdong Association it was uh, once a gathering place for all the Cantonese people in Chengdu and in 2014 they renovated the place and make it into a commercial space so which is why you're seeing Louis Vuitton now wow I haven't been here for a long time, uh, like you all know, so all of these are very new to me as well. Because uh, when I was here in 2011, this wasn't here yet. Oh. Now we're at a temple. So this is the front, and we're going to go into the temple. Oh, it's beautiful, huh? This is good luck in Chinese. Joy, luck, health. They give each person three incense for you to pray for good luck. So you just have started and like start the incense here. And you pray for your wishes like the people here. Put the incense right in the middle here. And this you can buy, put your wishes with your name. And with the candle, they will put in the back. And hopefully, uh, then your wishes will come true. I got my incense, so I'm gonna do that now. This is so cute. I love this. I had to IFS to look at the panda on the seventh floor. All right, so the panda is over there. We're going to go up now. This is quite funny. Panda with the Pepsi. And then over there, panda with the Coca-Cola. Not sure if you can see. Hi, panda, but, but Once you get to level three from the escalator, you will see a gigantic sign that says I'm here with the panda. At level seven, it will take you straight there because most people come here for that as well, aside from the shopping. Well, remember I said panda everything here in Chengdu So even this restaurant has nothing to do with panda or Chengdu They still serve the cup with panda It's raining outside so that's why I found a place to sit down Just to have a, like a little refresher a snack These are bird's nests So they are very good for especially women uh, So yeah, I'll be having that We had arrived at the Chengdu Wuho Shrine Museum It is a very huge complex as you can see in the map here It dates back as early as 220 2380, which is about 1,800 years ago. It's very impressive, right? It is pretty good that they give citizens over 60. It's free entering, so it's no ticket necessary. So I already pre-booked the ticket on WeChat. So we only need to scan. It's very convenient. Oh, that's a lot of people. I have to say, this place is pretty amazing. So let me tell you all about it while we explore together. The Wuhao Shrine is dedicated to Zhuge Liang, one of the most legendary figures in China's history. He was a brilliant strategist and a key figure during the Three Kingdoms period, known for his loyalty and wisdom. 
If you are into Chinese historical dramas or have read *Romance of the Three Kingdoms*, you probably know all about him. This shrine really brings that whole era to life. As you walk around, you will see memorial tablets, statues, and even the tomb of Liu Bei, the Emperor Zhuge Liang served under. What's cool is that this place doesn't just honor Zhuge Liang, but also the entire Shu Han State, which he helped build. This is what the shrine looks like in 1936. It takes a lot of upkeep for a big site like this, especially because it was built more than 1800 years ago. They're trying to say how smart and how wise he was because he also created the cattle-like wooden wheelbarrow. He's the one behind this, so he was thinking how to build this, and he actually made it into a wheelbarrow that we are seeing today from all types of like pictures and drama museums. It's quite beautiful, right? This garden. This is a very hot spot for photos and videos. It's very, very famous. Oh, it's beautiful. I can understand and see why. Lots of mosquitoes here because of the rain. We are at the Hui Museum. It's where Liu Bei is still. It is a 12 meter high burial site, and it hasn't been excavated yet. Rumor has it that many years ago, some uh, thieves tried, and they actually saw Liu Bei himself playing chess with some guy, and then he back for his life. And ever since then, no one has ever came to try again. Can you believe that? I can imagine this place when it's not raining. How beautiful it would be for pictures. It's still beautiful now. But it's just that, that too much mosquito. Wow, so pretty. It's so pretty, these bridges. Wow, it's beautiful here. Now let's go return the audio guide. I do think it's worth the visit if you are into Chinese history, as there's audio guide and also a tour guide here. It is a beautiful garden, lots of things to see and learn and to do. So if you're into Chinese history, do come. After the Wu Hao Shrine, right next to it is the Jing Li Street. It is a street full of food, snacks, wow. drinks. Mm, smells yummy. Wu tofu, fried oysters. So, what drinks do I want? I like anything with coconut. Oh, I want that. I actually like this cup, so I'm gonna get this. I got green tea flavor. Look how cute this is. Flowers, wow. Let me zoom in for you. Oh, it's beautiful. I love lotus flower. Now I see coconut after I had the ice cream. Oh, it's beautiful here, guys. I actually like it more than the shrine. Jinni, I actually like this. I like it more than uh, Kwanzaa Ling, the one that we went on the first night. A lot more. It is also commercial, honestly, but I felt like there are more to see here. Okay, now it's the sign. Jing Ni. So, I'm finally going to have Hapa. As you guys know, I was in Chongqing. I didn't have Hapa in Chongqing, which is the most signature dish, right? And Chandu's are also famous for Hapa. It is a different style, actually. It has to do with the oil, I should say. And it's my last night of this trip. I'm finally gonna have Hapa. Gonna finally have my hot pot. They had super long wait. It's already nice something, and I already tried to put myself online on WeChat. Now I should be able to get a table just within a few minutes. Yeah. Well, the soup base arrived. I ordered extra spicy in Chengdu. I'm finally having my Chengdu hot pot. So I asked the locals about the differences between the Chongqing hapat and the Chengdu hapat. It's not because of the oil that I thought earlier. They said it's the numbness of the spice. The last time I was here, I ordered medium spicy and I didn't think it was spicy. So this time I'm ordering the regular spicy and see how it goes. I know I'm gonna be thinking that it's gonna be too spicy. That's why I order the Chengdu beer. 
They said it is the most expensive here. So, but for us, it's very little. So let's try that beer first. What is it called? Huan means flower face. I don't usually drink that much beer, only when I eat hapa and when I go to Dai Pai Dong. So let's try it. Okay, and it's really good. It's not that light, so it's not like Budweiser. Yeah, so let's try the hapa, guys. So let's see how spicy it is. They said 18 seconds. 18 seconds. So let's try. I'm gonna try it without any of the oil and <coughs> oh, I, and I just dip it in it. Sorry. So let me try another one without that. They did also say that a big difference between Chongxin Chengdu Hapa compared to other Hapa like Guangdong Hapa is the sesame sauce. Uh, many people like they're not used to not having it, but I never really have it anyways. To me, I think it will be the same. But uh, they gave it to me because they they know I'm from Hong Kong, so they thought maybe I want it. But I told them how much I just wanna have the regular Chengdu Hapa. Has it been anti sanket? I have no idea, but it should be. It's so yummy guys. The original Chandu hot pot. So if you can eat spicy guys, please make sure you come. But even you cannot eat spicy, that's totally fine. You can always have like a herbal soup base in the middle. They also have three flavors or four flavors where you can get clear soup, mean clear broth, or with like a herbal soup, or with like a mushroom soup, or even with a chicken soup without the spiciness. And even if some part of your party is spicy, you can have a corner for them. All right. So now they're putting the pork for us with the egg. In China, the best thing is service. So basically, they will do so much for you. Whoa. <coughs> Must be so good. This is the shrimp paste I have been having. So I think this uh, regular spicy, which is large spicy, is perfect for me. I can I don't think I can do extra spicy yet, but medium spicy would be too little for me. So this is perfect. I'm so glad I finally did it because I have been missing hot pot for a long time. I had arrived at the Nine Eye Bridge. If you want to have a drink, everything across the street is a bar. This is where we're going. They always say that the people in Chengdu are more relaxed. They like a chill life uh, compared to other big cities in the world. So people are more chill and they, they take a stroll after dinner. But well, this is the bridge from up close. And this is the famous bar streets across the, the bridge. And like in any other big cities in China, you will, can never go hungry because that street snack. These are squid and octopus skewers, and these are watermelons. Two for ten RMB. There are many bars and restaurants here that has a view of the bridge. So they have tables on the side where you can get like a direct view of the bridge and along with your drinks and food. Beautiful, beautiful re reflection, right? This street is so famous for a live band. Every single restaurant and bar or pub would have a live band here. The vibe is definitely good here. Whoa. I'm now at the massage place. <laughs> I, I'm so used to all of this like technology and stuff, but then now they even let you scan with your palm so you can rent a portable charger. Is this is my room for the massages? It usually comes with one or two beds. This is what a four people's room look like, and you can watch any movies and TV. And as you can see, you can order unlimited food. So <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Whoa! 
panda everywhere. So cute. Look at these pandas. So cute. We are at the lounge here at Chandu. It's pretty nice. That's why I want to film a little bit. They have this like day bed type of lounge chair. This is the quiet area. Pretty nice actually. I'm quite surprised. The name of this lounge is literally just Friends and Business International Lounge or something. There's also a tea house area. Guys, there's also a massage chair. There are two of them and of course they are occupied. Pretty cool to have this massage chair, right? Right, and this is like a business center. And now when we get to the crowded side, relatively small area, right, for food, considering that the lounge is big, right? Tomato and fresh shrimp. Oh, sea cucumber. Wow, that's luxurious. Drinks. Now, my concern is where is the bar? Coffee. And over here, you can have, oh, you can have noodles like, oh, let me see. They have dandan dan noodle, of course. Noodles with peas and meat. Beef noodle, wonton, and dumplings. Oh, that's really, really, really good. Okay, let me order dandan dan noodle. I mean, we're here already. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you guys in, I think, Hong Kong. Never mind guys, I'm taking you all to Macau, a city that I have been going to since I was a baby. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share to your friends and I will see you guys next week.